Lord Jesus, have your way in, our, in us, Lord. Every breath that we take, Father God, comes from your hand, and we just give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can have a seat. Praise the Lord. I love that song. And um, just those words are beautiful. Uh, but also what's special about that song to me is Pastor Jeff came back from Uganda with uh, Brother Oyet, and that's the song that Brother Oyet sang, and he has an accent and I just loved it. But anyways, I love that song. Every breath that I take, Lord, and it just comes from him. And so praise the Lord for that. Well, I want to say hello to our Facebook family and friends. Um, wishing you all a happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you're all warm, fed, and you get to spend time with family. Um, so praise the Lord. Thanksgiving is such a happy time of being together. Amen. Um, you just feel warm and loved, and it's, it's, just, a, it's just a happy time. Uh, and it's a happy time of thinking, being thankful for all that we have. And how many of us know that all that we have comes from his hand? Amen. So praise the Lord for that. I love family time. It gets more precious as the years go by. And I, I just hope you're all blessed. So praise the Lord. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I want to pray. Father God, I just love you and praise you. And thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your presence. And Father God, just thank you for this time today with our family, Father God, and our friends here in the church, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for sweet worship, Lord, and just sweet fellowship, Lord. And Father God, may you just draw us closer to you through your word, Lord, and through your presence, Father. And we just love you and just ask that you would have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I think I'm on. I am. Um, Today, of course, I want to talk about being thankful and grateful to God uh, for all that we have. Uh, this Tuesday, the 21st, is my birthday, and as I'm getting older, I've um, realized that we need to be thankful and grateful always, and not just for the month of Thanksgiving, not just because it's Thanksgiving and people are talking about being thankful, but every day we need to be thankful, and I just think as you get older, you realize how... Um, precious time is. And uh, so that's what I want to talk about today is being thankful and grateful. When we are younger, we don't have to think about being healthy. Uh, we just take it for granted. We just eat what we want, do what we want. Life's good. We're young. We got forever. Um, so we are young, we're strong, we're, cap we're capable, and we can do everything on our own. We don't need no help. We're strong. We can do it all. And we have forever, we think, right? We, we, just, we don't think about death. We don't think about being gone. Uh, being younger, we also take our family for granted. Uh, we have forever. They have forever, we think. And we say, I'll get to them when I have the time. But like I said, when we get older, we get wiser. We just, we just do. It's too bad that we can't just be born and be wise. But no, we got to wait till we're older and then sometimes I don't think there's even wise older people so help us to be wise right uh, so we realize how precious our health is um, how precious family is and things definitely change as we mature the old stuff isn't as important as it was when we were younger I mean when we're young what do we think about we think all that stuff's important but as we as we get older it's like no we shouldn't have been thinking about that stu stuff you know we just get wise we uh, don't take our health for granted. Uh, see, we don't take our health for granted as we age. We realize we need to be healthy. We need to be able to move our bodies, work. We got to be healthy to be able to do the things that we want to do. Amen. Uh, take care of ourselves so we don't have to depend on others. I think that's the worst thing is not being able to do the things that you're used to doing. I remember. Um, I had um, foot surgery, and I had told Christy, um, when I go into surgery afterwards from the pills and whatever, I'm just emotional, and, and I cry, and so I wanted her to know that everything's okay, but I'm going to, you know, I'll probably be crying, and pl plus I was upset that Jeff wasn't here, right? I was having a surgery, and Jeff wasn't here, um, but anyway, so we got home, and Jolene, Jolene came, and I couldn't get up the steps, I don't know what, you know, it's stupid. I couldn't get up the steps with, so she had to help lift me up or whatever. So now by this time I'm crying, I'm mad. I cannot get up my steps. Jolene has to help me. Christy's helping me and I want to do this stuff myself. And I'm, I'm just so mad. And so uh, 
Anyway, so we get in the house and Christy was so smart that she said, mom, get one of those cute little scooter things. Cause I couldn't do the crutches. Um, so get these cute little, this cute little scooter. I said, oh, okay. Well, that thing was so fun that I would have to call for the kids. Could you bring me my scooter? I got to go to the bathroom. They're scootering all through the house. You know, could you bring me the scooter? I need my scooter. But it was fun. And uh, thank God that Christy uh, thought of that. But the point is we got to be healthy so we can take care of ourselves. I don't like depending on other people. And I really realized that when Jolene and Christy had to help me up the stairs, I was so mad. So take care of ourselves so we don't have to depend on others. Health gives us the ability to go and to enjoy the things that we enjoy. And that's a lot of different things for different people, right? A walk takes a healthy back, healthy legs, and healthy knees. As I do my walks, I always thank God for the time for a walk, time spent with him because I praise him. It's just me and him up there with the leaves falling, the wind blowing, and I'm just praising him, and it's a good, good time. And I'm thankful. I always tell him, God, thank you that I can walk these laps. I haven't been out for a while, um, but when I do... Thank you, God. And I know that it's his ability helping me because, man, when your back is down, you, you, it, it takes everything just to get up. It, I mean, it hurts. And I and I know those things. And so I just I'm just I never take my walk without telling him, thank you, Lord, that I can walk today. So how many of you know when your back is out, you cannot move or your foot or your ankle is bad? You won't be taking a walk. You won't be take, you won't be doing the things that you want to do. Um, I've been there and I remember it hurts. Um, so I tell him, you know, thank you. But back in my younger years, I never thought of pain. I never had pain, never had surgeries, never had nothing. So I didn't think about those things. I never thought that I couldn't go do a walk and go do the stuff that I want to do and, and enjoy it. I took it for granted, you know, because when we're young, we just take things for granted. As we mature, not as we get older, but as we mature, uh, things definitely change. I like 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It says that whatever we do, we are to do it to the glory of God. And Isaiah tells us we were created and, form, and formed by God to glorify him. This is our primary purpose in life, to glorify God. And, to do, uh, and, to, and when we do that, when we take care of our bodies, not to worship our bodies, but to take care of our bodies, what God has given us so that we can go and do the things that he's called us to do. Amen. It takes health to go do the things that God has told us to do. I'm going to go ahead and read. Um, go ahead and read 1 Corinthians 10 31, because I just kind of paraphrased it. Therefore, whether you eat or you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Here's a couple reasons to be healthy. Number one, it glorifies God. Number two, you're taking care of your body, his temple. The Lord Jesus Christ is living inside of us. Amen. Number three, it's being a good witness. Number four, you will have more energy, be better equipped for what God has planned for you. Like I said, when my back is hurting, I can't help you. I cannot do anything for you guys. I can pray. But there, I'm never going to be able to get up and come and give you food or do something that you need me to do because I'm hurting and I can't move. Uh, so um, being healthy makes us better equipped for what God has planned for us to do. My morning prayer, as I've said before, I just want to go over it again, starts with, late, uh, thank you, Lord, for a safe night. That's the first thing. And then it's thank you for the breath in my body, my kids and my family. We're breathing, we're living. I ask him to watch over my children and grandkids, to keep them safe, give them a good day, and to draw them close to him, wherever they are and whatever they are doing, Lord Jesus, to draw my babies close to you. I ask him to lead and guide me. Then I ask for him to heal those who are sick, that I know that are sick, hurting, lonely, help for uh, Israel, of course, to cover and protect. And then I ask God to help all those who I know who are trying to be healthy. And I call out your names, everyone that I know that is trying to eat right, trying to exercise, trying to be better. I call out your names because you know what? We cannot do it without the help of the Lord. We need his strength because we have different desires. Uh, we want we want to do what God wants us to do. Amen. It's not easy to eat right in the midst of all the to go food. 
There's just food wherever we go that wants to grab you. And um, sometimes you give into that and you know that it's not right. But, but he, he is our helper and he is our strength. Uh, we can be thankful that he is changing our desires. That's what I pray is God change the desires of my heart. I want to have your desires, Lord. And then I know I'm going to have a good life because those desires that he plants in me is good, right? He's not going to give me something that harms me. So be thankful to God for your health and don't take it for granted, however young you are or however old you are. But I, and I do know that as the older you get, you realize that you don't take it for granted. As for family, I've always had it, felt blessed, felt loved, appreciated, wanted. As life goes on, you start losing the ones you love and the ones that loved you. Being young, as I said, we take family for granted. Every day is a new day, but tomorrow is not promised. Every day is a new day that we get, but tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is never promised, so love and appreciate the people in your life. And you know what I and you know what? Tell them that you love them. It doesn't do any good when they die and you're crying and say, I love them. They need to know today that you love them. Amen. Don't wait until they're gone. Oh, I wish I would have went and visited grandma. Or oh, I wish I would have visited mom and dad more or whatever. Tell them today, today's what counts because they don't know when they die that you're crying and you love them. So appreciate them now and be good to them now. Amen. Thank you for that amen. And your loved ones say, thank you for that amen. Um, let me see. So hopefully, like I said, did they know? Did you tell them that you love them? I hope so. James 4.14 says, um, you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. It's quick. Be thankful for your family and your loved ones. Life can be uh, gone suddenly in just a moment's time. As we get older, we realize these things. Um, and as we get older, uh, more people that you love, you know, pass on. I want to mention a few loved ones of mine that have passed, and then I'm going to move on. Um, of course, I miss Jeff every day, all day, and some of you know what I'm talking about, those that have lost their spouse. I'm not going to go into that so that I don't uh, start crying. But then it was my mom, and I so miss being with my mom, uh, spending time with her, uh, going on our trips. We were always going on trips. She's always taking us camping, and I don't even like camping, but she took us in, up at a lake or Lakeview somewhere, uh, Shewa Camp or something. But we were up there for a month. No bathroom. But they made a bathroom, her and her uh, guy that she's with. They made a porta potty bathroom with it all um, enclosed and all that. And there was a creek that we, you know, washed from. But it was a whole month. I don't even like camping. But I took my kids and um, some of the cousins were there and had a great time that whole month. And you could hear the wolves. I say that wrong. But the wolves um, running down the canyon, doing their thing. And uh, we went back home and my dog, I had a bouncer dog like Ollie and he came back and he howled like, like the, like the wolves. But anyways, I don't like camping, but she was just fun. You know, she took the kids fishing and did fun things. So I, I just miss being with her, like I said, going on our trips, that special bond of a mother and daughter, a friend like no other. And a knowing that I was loved, no matter my mess ups, she still was going to love me, right? Uh, so I missed that. She was there for me. Uh, the late night phone calls because she know who she knows who I was. I'm up late. Uh, Tammy got this, this thing. I don't know what it's. Can you guys hear that when it does it? Um, Tammy, she got the morning phone calls. Excuse me. I don't know if that'll be better or not. Tammy got the morning phone calls before she went to work. She worked at the VA for 20 some years. And mom would always call her before Tammy went to work. Um, and I took all that for granted because mom's going to always be there, right? Um, so that's my mom. She'll be there when I get to her, when I get time for her. When I get done taking care of Jeff and the kids, I'll spend my time with mom. You know, life is busy. We always say that life is busy, got stuff to do. But God is talking to someone today. Take the time to be with your family. Amen. Slow down. Be thankful. Appreciate the ones that we have here with us before they too are gone. Right? 
The older we get, the more people we lose. I just want to mention two more, and then I'm moving on. Uh, my brother-in-law, Greg, he was gone right after mom. And oh, let me say that mom came to my house right after Jeff had passed, like I, I think three, three months or something, and she gave her heart to the Lord. So praise the Lord for that. But anyway, so Greg, my brother-in-law, he loved me, always made me feel wanted, never made me feel like I was in the way. Um, I truly felt loved from him, and I loved him. Uh, he treated Jeff good, my kids, my grandkids, my mom. He was just a good guy. He was a family guy. And um, it's just good to have those kind of people around you. Amen. And, I, and what's funny is I'd known him since I was 14. So I knew him before I even knew Jeff. And that's just, that's crazy to me that he was in my life all that time. And then you'd think after losing all of them that I'd be wise and appreciate those around me. You think I've had some experience here of losing loved ones. So you think I would be a pro at this, right? Last one I want to mention is my brother, Larry. I always called him a heathen. And if you knew him, you'd know why, but he was a fun guy. And Larry was an awesome brother. Uh, and I knew without a doubt that he loved me and would always protect me, had my back, and he was for me. I just, I knew his love. Um, but he would call and say, hello, is Jeff there? I'm like, Larry, you know, you're talking to me. What about me? And, and then I won't tell you what he called Jeff because uh, it wasn't nice, but it was hilarious. But anyway, so he would talk to Jeff. They had a wonderful relationship also. So I just want to say, once again, I took his love for granted after losing all these loved ones that I've had. And he was a much better brother than I was a sister. Um, so once again, I was busy with life, not being grateful for my family, my time with them, and always figuring we had forever. And how could I think that when I know how quick it can be gone? And his life, his wife, gone in a moment's time, suddenly. That's how quick it, it, it went suddenly. So I'm saying, let's be thankful, let's be grateful for the gifts that God has given to us, amen. Every family member you have is a gift from God. And our children are a gift from the Lord, whether you think so or not. They are a gift, right? Total gift. And it just keeps getting better and better because then they're gonna grow up, get married, have babies, and you're gonna have some more babies. So it just keeps getting better and better. Um, health, family, and time. We'd be grateful for that health, family, and time. Slow down and enjoy the things that we enjoy with the time that we have left. Could be tomorrow or it could be another hundred years. We don't know when our time's up or when God's coming, right? So enjoy it. Let's be wise with what God has given to us. I love this scripture. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. And that is Psalms 145, 13. And he made us, and he's loving towards us. How can we do our part uh, uh, to be healthy? I'm glad you guys asked me. I'm so glad you guys asked me. Uh, we are working on this, right? This is a lifelong thing. This is a life journey that we're working on to be healthy. Get a good night's sleep. For some of, that, for some of us, that is hard. I do not sleep. Uh, but we need a good night's sleep. Slow down the busyness of life. And some people just love to say how busy they are. I think it makes them feel more important or more valued or something, but they're, oh, I got this to do and this to do and this to do and this to do. Slow down. Slow down and enjoy life. Relax a little. Make wiser decisions of your time. Make wiser decisions on your nutrition. Eat quality foods. Choose good foods, not the cakes and the donuts, right? I'm doing so much better at that. Praise the Lord. But it still draws me. I still want it. And we're finding good things that taste good that I can have that's still good for me, right? So choose um, quality foods. Choose good foods. To be in prayer and communing with the Lord is health to our bodies. Takes away some of life's stress. You know, we're so busy and doing this and doing that. And we're stressed out. But if we get in the word, get in and commune with the Lord, he eases those things from our minds and our hearts. So it takes away some of life's stress, gives us some peace when there seems no way. You look at situations, there's no way that this is going to work out, God. 
And God's already got your back. He's already got it figured out for you. Just lean into him. Amen. Ask him for wisdom. Let's read um, Colossians 2, 6 and 7. <coughs> Colossians 2, 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Let's be thankful, amen? Um, be rooted in him, in his word. Be a thankful people and be grateful. I know I've talked a lot today, but being thankful for your families, your health is important. And I just think it's more important, like I said, as I'm maturing, not getting older, I'm just maturing. Thanksgiving is profoundly a Christian holiday. It focuses on God as the true source of all our blessings. And I don't know how many times I say, say that, but every Wednesday night when I get up and I'm doing the offering, all that we have comes from the hand of the Lord. And we, we need to remember that. We, I, I think a lot of times we think, okay, we're working. We've got a job. I'm doing this. Your job came from the Lord. Your breath came from the Lord. So all that we have comes from the Lord. Amen? Um. So let me see. It focuses on God as the true source of all our blessings. All we have comes from him. There's a hymn that says, All things bright and beautiful, all created things great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. So all that you see, the Lord God made them all. I think of it when I go to the ocean. The ocean makes me cry. Uh, always has, even when I had Jeff. Uh, it's just his awesome power. And especially that he, he said, stop and come no more. Those ocean waves could just be coming and coming and, you know, taking over everything. But God said, stop and come no more. And just his, I don't know, you just see his power and his awesome and awesome. I'm not going to say that word. Ashley, say it for me. Okay. Uh, you, just, you just see the Lord's hand, how, how beautiful it is. And so the, the ocean makes me cry. And I love, like I said, my walks, the wind blowing, the rain coming, the leaves, the sunshine, the birds. All that is from the Lord. So all that our eyes can see is from the Lord. He created it. And he created it for us. That's how much he loves us. So I just give him praise. And so be thankful for that. Uh, we, as the children of God, need to increase our own grateful or our own gratitude to the Lord for all his blessings. Let's read Psalms 103. And I'm going to read all of it because it is so good. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known to his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with, our, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourish, flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone. And its place it remembers no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven 
and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Brandy, I was thinking about you when you stand up here talking about David. And um, so this is a David psalm. Uh, so praise the Lord for that too. Um, it is so good. And then I want to read Psalms 103. No, I, okay. But bless the Lord, O my soul. God is to be praised, exalted, glorified. He is worthy. There is none like him. Amen. He is always to be lifted up in praise. There's none like him. I seen this post again and it popped up and I, I love it. I want to say it again. Somebody didn't wake up today, but you did. That's enough reason to stop complaining. And that's enough to be thankful for. So yeah, life gets hard. Things are hard and um, scary and, you know, and we have to go through this journey. But guess what? You did wake up and God's with you and God's going to help you with whatever's going on in your life. Amen. Never let your troubles blind you to your daily blessings. You are blessed daily. Uh, we can't pray for a blessing then complain about it once, once it comes. God heard your prayer in his glorious fashion. He sent you a life partner, uh, gave you a job, a place to live, a car, etc. And then you sit around and complain about the package that God sent you. It wasn't what I wanted, God. It's the wrong color, etc. Don't we know that God looks at how we accept the small things that he gives us before he blesses us with the greater? Let's don't be complaining and murmuring what God has given to us. Our tongue, our attitude are blocking our blessings. Be careful how we handle what God gives you. Be thankful and be grateful. It is a shame that we only have one day set aside each year to give thanks to God as a nation. We should set aside some time each day, amen? to give our praise and thanks to him who has blessed us so richly. As God's children, it is fitting that we focus our thoughts not only today at this, and at this time of the year, but often upon the goodness of God and offer our gratitude to him for who he is and for, for all he's done for us. David in Psalms 103, was a, um, it was a prayer of praise. There was no request. There was no petition or plea in his prayer. It was pure praise to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. David was awestruck with God's blessings. He was looking at his life, counting his blessings, instead of complaining about his burdens. And he had a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in his life. It dawned on David just how much God had done for him. He realized how good God had been and how understanding or how undeserving he was of all of his blessings. We're not worthy that God should choose us, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, but he loves us and he did choose us, Cho he chose us. If you ever have a problem praising God and you can't think of any reasons to praise him, go back and read Psalms 103. That's a very good uh, song for you to read. This song was a song. David sang his prayer and his praise to the Lord. All the Psalms are also known as a hymn book. The Hebrews sang the Psalms. Praise the Lord. So the hymns, uh, the Hebrews were singing the Psalms. David was also an accomplished musician, a man who sang with feeling and with conviction. This was a joyous song of praise. David was a guy who danced and worshiped the Lord so much that you remember one of his wives said, that's enough, don't do that. But uh, David worshiped God no matter what. Let's read Psalm 66, uh, one through four. Just a couple pages back. 66, 1 through 4. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. And all the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name, O Lord. All the earth will sing praises to the king, our Jesus. The king of kings is our Jesus. David, um, David was serious about praising the Lord. It was part of 
part of his daily living. So I pray that that's part of our daily living, right? Is to be thankful, grateful, and to praise God, no matter what's going on. And he was grateful to the Lord and he chose, um, and he could not help but praise him. Life in relationship with God is meaningful. Let's read Psalms 103, four and five. who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He forgives our sins. He gives us a relationship. He heals our soul and he heals our diseases. Praise the Lord. Verse five, he gives us satisfaction in old age. David is speaking to his soul. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's saying that one of the benefits of being God's people is that when we are old, we will not have to look back upon life, our life with regret. He renews us, praise the Lord. He makes thing, He takes the old and he makes things new in our lives. So he's just so good like that. Like I said, if you can't think of any reason to be thankful or grateful, go back and praise God and read those psalms. Uh, let me close with this. David said, I will praise him with all that is within me. That means I will praise him with my attitudes. And there's quite a few attitudes we all have. My actions, my family, my finances, my words, my work, my relationship, my voice. Even though I can't sing, I can still praise him. And he loves my singing. He loves to hear me. Uh, my vacations, my church my hobbies, and my habits. I will praise him not only in word, but also in deed. I will praise him with everything that's within me. No other is worthy like our Jesus. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That is Psalms 37, uh, 4. Let's finish up with Psalms 100. These eyes, Lord, are so healed and blessed. Psalms 100, a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his, and, and his truth endures to all generations. Facebook family and friends, have a blessed Thanksgiving. Enjoy your loved ones, and we will see you next week. And God bless you.